to show you how to calculate NPV and IRR in Google Sheets. Now, if you've used Excel, the formatting is, is essentially the same. There are a few little subtle differences, which I'll show you. But it has to be the same because Google wants this to be compatible with Excel. Because in order to get people to switch from Excel to Sheets, um, the, it has to be easy. We refer to this as a switching cost. If the notation was different, if the formulas were different, if it worked completely uh, differently, nobody would switch. It's also the case that the old Excel files have to be compatible with Google Sheets. Okay? Excel has been the standard for many, many years. And most people have hundreds, if not thousands, of spreadsheets they might like to access at some point. And if they did, they were not compatible with Google Sheets, you were, would be very unlikely to switch. Now, the downside is that because it has to be compatible, it also has the same errors that Excel has. And in fact, the formula for NPV is you find the present value of the uh, the cash flows and you subtract out the cost so you net out the cost okay very similar to thinking about your gross pay versus your net pay you might earn a thousand dollars a week okay in gross pay but your net pay after you pay taxes and perhaps um, put money into a 401k your check might be more like eight hundred and seventy eight dollars and eighty three cents Okay, that's your net. We've netted out all those other costs. Unfortunately, when they created the NPV function in Excel, whoever coded it didn't know what NPV was and didn't subtract out the cost. So, or treat the cost as a year zero cash flow that was not discounted. So in this case, you get the present value of every single one of these. So they start discounting this by year one, this one by year two, etc. So you don't get the right formula. All right, so you have to do it a little differently. Um, one of the things that's true here, if you don't know how to use, or you don't know what formulas are available in Sheets, in Excel, um, they give you some, they give you a menu. Here you have to go digging for it a little bit. You see these little dots here? If you click that, you get some info here, and you see the summation sign, this little this capital sigma? If you click that on, it shows you you can find these financial functions, uh, you know, X NPV, rate PV, etc. Same functions you would get in other in Excel, and also statistical functions and math functions, etc. All right, so let's see if we can calculate this correctly, and then I'll show you that, in fact, um, the calculation is not correct if you use it the way you might think you'd like to use it. Okay, so I'm going to type in NPV. Now here, it shows you what needs to be typed in in what order. That's what Excel does. If it's not here, if this is closed, there's a little question mark that you can hit that will tell you, you know, what order to put the arguments in. Okay, and you can also hit this, you know, uh, menu key, and it'll give you more information about the function. All right, so the first thing I need to put in is the discount rate, which is up here. I'm going to use 12% weighted average cost of capital, and I'm going to put in the cash flows from year one to year five, and then I have to subtract out the cost because this is negative. I'm just going to add the cost. And if I do that, I get 64,793.05. It's positive, so this is a good project. We ought to do it. The IRR function does work correctly, and you just highlight all the um, all the cash flows, including the cost. Close up that up, and you get 32.2%. So if you did this as you would expect, you should do this you're going to get the wrong answer. So we'll put in that 12% discount rate, and we'll put all the cash flows in, 
And we'll close it up and you get a different number here. And let me show you that that is in fact incorrect. So let's find the present value of each one of these cash flows and then we'll just add them up and see if we get this number or this number and then we'll know what happened. Okay, when you use a function, it's kind of a black box. You don't know exactly what it's doing. NPV doesn't calculate NPV and um, they don't actually tell you that. All right, so there's a PV function and we want to put in the rate and the rate we're going to use is 12%. We want to lock that cell, so I'm going to put a dollar sign in front of that. Okay, and it tells you what to put in next, okay? Um, the number of periods here is zero, and then the payment amount, or the annuity, is also zero. There's no annuity, and the future cash flow is this. So we get the 100,000 as we would expect. So let me calculate, let me copy this down. Hopefully I've done this correctly. Okay, they give you all the opposite signs. So actually let me let me go back and just flip these signs here. So let me make this negative PV this and copy this down so that we get the right signs. Okay, when you did it in Excel it gave you the opposite signs. Now let's sum those up. Equals sum and it's going to sum those up for us. And sure enough, we get, it's not formatted, so let me format it so it's a little easier to see. You can see that we get 64,793.05. So we get this number here, and this is correct. You can also take this incorrect one. Remember, they started discounting one period too soon, right? So this shouldn't be discounted at all, but it's discounted by one period. This should be discounted by one period, it's discounted by two. If you multiplied all of these numbers by one plus the discount rate, you should get the same answer as well. So let me see if that works. Equals this times one plus the discount rate, I'm going to close that up, that also gives us the right answer. So you can see that the NPV function is not correct. You have to find the, use the NPV function for the positive cash flows from year one to year five and subtract out the cost separately. So this is the case for Google Sheets as, as it's been the case for Excel um, since the beginning when it was coded incorrectly.